Well, those of you that have followed the channel for a while know I do my very best to keep my opinions out of these video pieces. If you ever see my opinion, it's typically in our live stream, sharing it with either our guests or when Luke and I are together, if we want to debate some things that are going on in futsal, that's where I save my opinions. I don't think they quite belong in these videos where I'm trying to present you guys with facts. And U.S. futsal has been something I've greatly avoided for the course of this year because of my connection with one of the people involved in that story. I didn't feel right reporting on it. Now that we're a little further down the road and there's been a couple extra steps into that process and that next step to this story, I feel a little more comfortable that I can provide you guys with some structure, uh, sound structure and, and facts and paint a better picture for you guys. So uh, excuse me if I do go off on a little rant during this video, it's very possible. I'm just going to freeform it. You guys tell me if I'm wrong, but let's start by kicking off with the big news that happened back in April in U.S. futsal, and that was when Dushan was let go and his coaching staff was let go by the U.S. Soccer Federation. It was largely criticized because Dushan had taken a program that was fairly unsuccessful in its endeavors and had little to no structure to it from what I could see. Now, again, hey, that is slightly my opinion, and I can't go far enough back to see the results and see what kind of camps were put on to truly say that. But the fact is, in the statistics of this team, U.S. soccer has never performed as well in decades as it had under Coach Dushan and his staff. And they made their return to the World Cup for the first time in several cycles and uh, even saw a very successful CONCACAF championship tournament, which uh, is traditionally very tough for us uh, as the United States to get through that tournament and qualify. A lot of great footsalling countries in CONCACAF that tend to stonewall us from moving forward. Coach Dushan found a way to do it with arena soccer players. And not only that, he found a way to find true futsal players and slowly lace them into this squad, really practice futsal principles and make our style of play really attractive and entertaining to watch. And he had some successful runs, not only in the CONCACAF championship, but one of his latest endeavors before he left the team was in Umag, which we reported on earlier in the year where they played against some U23 teams. So granted, not senior teams, but did win that tournament against some of uh, some very good soccer federations, futsal federations, excuse me, out of Europe. So when the news came that Dushan was departing from U.S. Soccer Association, uh, it was very shocking to the futsal world. And a lot of questions were asked, and a lot of people were somewhat outraged by this, that there was just a sudden end to the story uh, especially in a time period that is so critical as we prepare for the CONCACAF championships coming up in the fall, right around the corner, guys. So it's very interesting to see what U.S. soccer has done in the meantime. Uh, once they finally announced that they had parted ways with Dushan, which happened a few months after the actual departure, rumors were swirling everywhere. And I'm going to put a screenshot here uh, from a tweet from Chris Fernandez from that time period. And he is very well connected in the futsal space. So although this is not collaborated or or uh, I'm not able to factually confirm and guarantee this, everything I'm hearing and everything he's hearing kind of lines up in the fact that there was a little bit of conflict of interest between some interest groups and some programs that Dushan was doing on his own. So that program seems to all point to NFDP, the National Futsal Development Program. This program was put together for teenagers in high school from 16 through 19 to prepare them for next steps in futsal and hopefully find that next generation of true futsalers that could feed the U.S. futsal national team and build that bench, build up that depth chart for the U.S. futsal. Well, apparently some of the other groups in the United States that uh, partake in training futsalers or have futsal organizations saw this as a threat to their own programs and apparently had uh, caused a stir, which forced USFF's fan, USSF's hand to make a decision on the future of the program it's something that really maddened a lot of people in the circles and again guys another reason i didn't report on this sooner was because a lot of the people i talked to uh trying to find a way to build this story out back in april talked to me in confidence they didn't want to share what they knew since then a lot more has come out in the wash but i didn't want to put anyone in a position where they felt like they could not trust me with talking to me in confidence I thought that my word was more important than the story at the time. So I cannot confirm for sure still to this day that that's actually what happened. We cannot confirm who or which organization might have spurred this if that is the case. But 
everything that we were able to find in the rumors and in the in the dirt sheets of our world pointed in that direction. It's really unfortunate because you look at a program in U.S. soccer that is sharing a platform of an extended national team with eight other programs that fall under that umbrella and they all share a budget. And then that budget continually gets slashed by U.S. soccer because they don't see the importance in these extended national team programs. Unfortunately, that means that we are not appropriately paying someone who is overqualified for a position to coach for us for futsal. And not only that, but the effort he's putting in because of his passion for this country uh, was then penalized when he found a creative way to do that and not only take care of himself with the program, but also take care of U.S. futsal. Kind of a sad sad position to be in and it really shows what u.s soccer either doesn't understand our sport or that they don't care that is 100 percent my opinion but i'll let you guys chime in on that in the comments as we go further into the video it was announced when they let dushan go that uh the assistant coach from the women's national team who had literally just been announced sasha Filippi, would be taking over as an interim head coach that position was literally just a figurehead position. I don't believe from my understanding of reading articles that any U.S. futsal uh, events took place in his tenure as interim head coach. But now we see the new head coach that will permanently take the place of Dushan and Sasha. So Sasha will step aside and become the assistant coach for Hewerton Moriera. Now, Hewerton has a interesting uh, resume when it comes to uh, his background. So he spent a lot of time playing futsal in Brazil, his home country. He became an American citizen back in 2022, according to U.S. Soccer's introduction of him, which is exciting. Uh, I'm always a big fan of the best and the brightest in all fields, finding a way to become a part of this great country. But it's all started in Brazil for him, where he spent several years in the top tiers there, accumulated nine championships nine league championships across five teams in his tenure in brazil that spanned until the early 2000s where he found his way to the united states to play arena soccer or indoor soccer as it's sometimes called here and uh that's the bouncy ball with the walls and the turf i'm not a big fan of it i think it could create uh bad habits for kids but at an adult level it's certainly well established uh they certainly have a, a fan base that has been around since the early days and as a matter of fact, if you want to understand a little bit more about the U.S. indoor soccer scene, Futsal Focus just did a fantastic article highlighting the history of arena soccer and how it could revolutionize futsal if they would make that shift to continue to revolutionize their program and stay relevant. But I'll leave that up to Futsal Focus and for you to read there. We'll put a, a link to that in the description if you guys are curious. Please follow along with that. But uh, the important thing is back to Hewerton, who planned his trade here in indoor soccer for another several years he had a great resume which included almost 200 goals and over 150 assists as uh, as a player he then turned that into a coaching career in indoor soccer in arena soccer with cedar rapids at the time in 2016 he bounced his way around to utica city which is where he currently is at now in utica new york coaching their program which has seen a, a bit of a resurgence they have not found that uh, medal to put in the trophy case just yet, but it seems like he is having a successful coaching career there as they have continued to improve over the years. So this brings up a great question. What does this mean for the future of U.S. futsal? Is this a step forward or a step back? Before Dushan, we had Keith Tozer as our head coach. Unfortunately, the record doesn't look good for his tenure there, but he is a uh, well-known figure in futsal and arena soccer here. In fact, he is a uh, executive for the MASL, which is uh, the top tier in, in prime arena soccer league in the United States. His name carries a lot of weight in that space. But is this a revert back to arena soccer players filling in for futsalers? Or is this truly going to continue on with Hewerton's futsal roots from Brazil? And can he build on what Dushan had built as a foundation for this country's futsal program with true futsalers coming in in representing this country and competing at the highest level with countries that truly practice the game itself, which is futsal. The only recognized indoor soccer in the world by FIFA, by the way. FIFA does not recognize arena soccer as a, a, a program that, that, that falls under their umbrella. So to me, I'm, I'm a little nervous about that. I'm curious to see 
what this means for the look of the U.S. soccer program and the U.S. futsal program as they move forward. I want to hear what you guys think. What do you think about special interest groups having a play in what federations are making as far as decisions? We see it all the time. We've seen it in all kinds of different countries where they don't see the importance of futsal like we do in our community. And if you guys joined us recently with my interview with Ransom Bantz, we really, really highlighted the fact together that their futsal community is insanely passionate and has so much upside to it if someone would just invest in it and believe in it. I've told you guys before, as we've covered other FAs and their failures at futsal, that we as the futsal and community need to keep our chin up. We need to continue to control our own destiny and not wait for someone to come along and solve the problems for us or finally decide they're going to flip a switch and let the flow of cash flow come to us so we can make this thing bigger. We need to do it on our own. And even though this story hits close to home for me and is certainly hard to digest mentally and, and pulls a lot of emotion from me personally, I still believe that. We must move onward and forward and continue to look ahead. What do you guys think is the future of U.S. futsal? And do you think that the program is in good hands? Another thing I want to ask you guys, I want you to take a look at the screenshots I'm putting on the screen right now. One of the things that I'm going to have a really hard time here not putting my personal opinion in, guys, is the way that this position is structured. This is a full-time job that they have listed as part-time. And because of what we know about the program budget be being slashed back to back years by massive amounts. It's going to be garage sale levels of revenue for whichever person takes this coaching position, in this case, Hewerton. So to me, the fact that anyone with any kind of futsal background took a look at this job and found it attractive it, it is shocking to me. I can't believe we found anyone with any kind of futsal background that was interested in this job position. But I think one thing that says a lot is Hewerton will continue to be the Utica City indoor uh, indoor soccer team's coach as well, which says a lot about how much this job pays versus how much it demands on paper as a job description for us to be successful in U.S. futsal. What do you guys think about all these factors? Sound off in the comments and let me know what's next for U.S. futsal. And until I hear from you then, don't forget to play with your soul.